Welcome back to the advisory deck. Uh, we're doing a Zoom uh, advisory deck session here today. I am, of course, with James McGill. How are you, James? I'm, I'm still excited by how excited you get, Troy, at the beginning of these. It's fantastic. So looking Energy, forward to chatting with enthusiasm. Sam. It's great. Um, and today we're really fortunate to be joined um, by uh, a terrific uh, business founder uh, out of Kitan in Victoria, near Dingy. Uh, and I'll let him explain that. Um, but we've got Sam Marwood, who is the co founder of Cultivate Farms, which is a, a social enterprise which really connects uh, aspiring younger farmers who want to get involved in farming um, with both investors uh, and, and, and farmers who might want to uh, exit that as well. But uh, I'll, I'll let him talk a little bit about that. Sam, thanks so much for joining us. Troy, thank you. And thanks, James. Uh, you, you, you nailed it. And, um, you know, we're evolving our business model as well, which we can talk through today. But um, that's, you know, that's the cornerstone, cornerstone of what we do. It's how do you make farm ownership possible for those who don't start with a farm, you know, aren't going to inherit it and um, are starting from scratch. So we know that is a big driver for many people. There's probably people sitting in skyscrapers right now listening to this who would be a farmer tomorrow and own farm if they could, but they can't. Um, and we're saying it's possible and you don't need to necessarily inherit to, to be a farmer. So before James jumps into the business questions, I'm really interested in your motivation. Why start um, something like this? What's what's the sort of the why for you? I think like most ideas, it's trying to find a, a solution for your own problem. Um, but, you know, the, the, at the core, like my parents didn't give me a family farm. I'm one of six, so I wasn't going to get it anyway. And, and they just sold up and, and moved into town. And uh, I remember at the age of eight, my dreams of owning my farm were crushed when when dad laughed when I asked for the farm. Um, <laughs> And uh, I knew, well, if I'm not going to own it, I'm not going to, why would I be a farmer? So I went and worked for government for many years. Um, and it was one day when I caught up with my mate, Tim Hicks, who's a co-founder, co and he just said, all I want to do is own my farm. He had the same story. Uh, imagine if there was a business that bought farms for young people. And I went back to being eight years old in my mind going, man, if I knew there was a, a way to own my farm, I would have said, well, screw you, dad. I'm going to go buy my farm and this is how I'm going to do it. Um, you know, my life would have been completely different. And you just see that in people's eyes. Every time we talk about what we're doing and people who follow us, you can see in their eyes, they're saying, yes, that's what I want. And I'm going to make it happen. And um, I don't know exactly the exact pathway, but it's possible. And, and helping people get do that is a driver. Like my bigger vision is to be able to influence Australia's landscape and ensure we're getting good food um, to my kids and everyone else's kids and ensuring we'll look after land is a bigger driver for me. Fantastic. So, so many questions, right? So many things to unpack here. I might, I might just start with one, picking up where you finished then, um, local food, local local uh, production. Has that changed, do you think, during COVID? Has there been a, an increased awareness that you're seeing in terms of wanting to either invest in farms or own farms that's come out of COVID? Uh, not directly. I think there's been a drive anyway. I think it's just a latent thing boiling inside of humans all over the world that they want to farm and they want to own their farm and they want to get involved in it. And it's just, they didn't know it was an option. Um, and you know, you, you, you see prices for land going up now with COVID and people realizing they can work via zoom for, for, for their jobs. Um, things are changing in that way. So probably the price of land is probably the big change, but what I think hasn't changed is, people's desire to farm and it just hasn't been promoted as something that is financially rewarding and uh, exciting but I, I think with social media that's probably been the biggest change is that you don't have to hide behind a label or you know a brand you know, someone else's branding or you know organic or whatever the brand might be you can connect directly with consumers and do a little video and show them where your farm is and connect that way which i think is so powerful and a, a great way for many, many farmers are doing it already a great way to connect with a, a consumer i remember on our dairy farm i always wondered where our milk went the milk tanker came in and took the milk away and i said where what where does this milk go i never met a customer and you know that's changing and i think that's really exciting because people want to know where their, their food comes from and they want to know it's been grown by good people with a passion and and i think that's been the change that um, you know, I think it was happening anyway, but COVID's probably high, you know, uh, pushed it along faster. That uh, you know, willingness for people to connect with their food and connect with the with the growers. Okay. And then, if, if we look at your your business in a very um, at, a, at a very quick glance, a very simple glance, it might appear like it's a, um, a fairly straightforward 
broker model. You've got someone who wants to buy a farm, someone who's selling a farm and you put them together. I think that the reality is what you're doing is a lot more complex than that on, on both sides in terms of finding the right people to buy into the farm, the right farmers, and also the right investors is almost a three-way sort of match. How long has it taken to, to, I guess, not get that right because the models continually evolve, but get it to a point where you're going, okay, I've got something here. I think it works. I can repeat this again and again. How long did that take from when you first came up with the idea? Uh, yeah, three years probably till we realised we we had something here. Uh, we we did so many coffee meetings, a lot of Googling, spoke to people across the world trying to figure out how do you make ownership possible. Uh, and we thought we'd have to set off a fund um, and we didn't pursue that. We thought we had to get an AFSL. We didn't even know what that was. Um, and it sounded like hell. And then we realized after talking to retiring farmers uh, who want to share their farm that they don't need capital. They need a farmer. And we realized, oh, it's about finding someone who they get along with and willing to think about sharing. Oh, we don't need a fund. We're just going to match people who get along. And it's the same concept for an investor as well. There are those three sides of the market. They need something, but at the core of it, they need someone they get along with that they wake up in the morning going, I'm so glad I'm working with this person and I own a business with them. Uh, that is the ultimate outcome and the technical arrangements of how that happens. You know, we, we, we leave up to the accountants and lawyers to figure that out. Our goal is to get the right people who want to commit for the long term together. You got, you got a few parties involved. I can see Troy's brain thinking about customers and, and managing expectations and so forth. Yeah, yeah, look, I'm really interested in that, you know, at its easiest, you know, it just comes together beautifully and naturally, but it's more challenging, you know, with these sort of three mm. or more parties, you know, investor, exiting farmer, aspiring entrant farmer. Um, there's a Venn diagram of expectations there where you're looking for the sweet spot in the middle there, but it doesn't always, it's not always beer and Skittles. You know, what have you learned about managing expectations in that kind of, you know, expanded triangle? The one thing that I think we offer that takes a lot of awkwardness and um, probably the risk out is we, we are about ownership. So many farmers, <clears throat> when they're talking together, they don't, they are, uh, yeah, ownership's bubbling away in the bottom. Yeah, that's what the aspiring farmer wants. But how do you ask someone for their farm? And oh, uh, how do you uh, how do you do that? And we're saying, no, no, you're talking about ownership. It might happen you know, after a few years, but that is the goal of these conversations. So straight away, we're taking, we're setting up the expectation from the start that in some way, you as a retiring farmer or investor are going to share ownership of a of farm with this farmer. And we hear most of the time those discussions are, didn't you know, you know, didn't you know I wanted to own the farm? Well, we never spoke about it. Why? Because it's so awkward for some reason. So straight away we get rid of that awkwardness and say that is what this discussion ultimately is about. And then we then focus on ensuring you get along and there's a trial period. So if you do get along, have a trial period of 12 months to get to know each other, work together, you know, have, go through hell together on a, on a day trying to pull five carbs in a morning on the dairy farm, whatever it is. Um, and realize you get along and then make sure you've got a contract in a place which has the exits mapped out like any business uh, and has expectations and roles established and have an independent uh, third party who is there to you know, check in every month on where you're at. Um, so be professional about it and don't um, assume it's all going to work out, but write it down and, and be ready that this might not work and, and be ready that you can walk away. Mm -hmm. There's a, before we have these conversations, we do our, our research and try and figure out for someone like yourself who isn't really disrupting an industry or creating a new industry. Are like you creating a new a new segment? Because we couldn't find anyone who's doing something similar, certainly not in Australia and, and obviously we're not obviously around the world. Have you discovered in those three years of, of coffee conversations and Googling and trying to talk to different people around the world, have you discovered anyone who's doing something like this? No. Um, which is good, um, but also super frustrating. Yeah. There, there's someone who's thinking about doing this for any business. I've always thought this could be cultivate business, that there are business owners who don't really want to step away, but are running out of puff to um, keep the business going and would do a vendor finance deal. So, you know, if someone wants to steal that idea, I'm happy to be to steal it or, you know, we can go into business together. Um, but yeah. Ownership, I still don't see anyone out there really focused on ownership. Across Australia, there's all these bank-ready programs, which are awesome for, for young farmers. There's 
education on how to be a farmer. Uh, universities and TAFEs are all focused on that. There's all these training programs on farming, which is fantastic, but nothing that says, this is how you go from zero to owning a farm. Uh, and this is how you eat dirt, well, maybe literally, but this is how you eat dirt to yeah. get in front of someone to prove you're good enough to one day that they're going to say, hey, I'm willing to share my farm with you. But we haven't seen anyone do it. And trying to think, you know, outside of farming, I haven't seen a model like it around shared ownership either. You know, there's shared ownership organisations who establish, you know, employee ownership programs and really similar, um, but not exactly the same as what we're doing here. And it, which is really surprising because ultimately this, this isn't that complicated. And vendor finance deals before banks got involved in, I think it was in the 1920s, vendor finance and lease to buy was, that's how farms transitioned for people outside of families. It was just the norm. Uh, and these deals happen every day as well across Australia, just farmers aren't arrogant, um, boastful people going out there telling people, you know, this is the deal I did, isn't it great? That's all just happened without anyone really knowing. Um, so yeah, we've had to do a lot of digging and, and pulling up to our own ideas and talking to, to cobble this together. It is a business though that I think probably evokes a lot more emotion than most business mm. transactions. You know, someone who's built up a, a deli or a whatever other kind of business, farming, as you well know, coming from the farm, is it's a lifestyle choice. And it's quite often a hard lifestyle choice. It can be really mm. rewarding and really lucrative, but really bloody hard work as well. And the other part that I would notice about working in kind of farming communities is the tightness of communities. And I guess as I sort of look at your model and think about, you know, young, aspiring, want to get involved in life on the land. It looks really great. And I love that wide open spaces and, you know, the ability to contribute to a healthy, sustainable food chain for my kids and, and all of those kind of concepts. Um, you know, there are some challenging realities with this as well. And so I'm kind of interested in what you've learned along the way about sort of going, well, let me moderate expectations of you here a little bit. Do you play a role in that or are you sort of pure play well, you know, you've got to sort those kind of thoughts out and decisions out for yourselves. We'll facilitate the kind of engagements. Um, what, where, where do you sit on all of that? Yeah, I think we, if that just categorise who we are, we're an education organisation now and ed educating people in how hard it is to farm and own your farm. And we set up <clears throat> barriers or, or hurdles for people to jump over that, you know, we're not here to hold your hand and say, people, you know, every day <laughs> people send me an email saying, Sam, I want to own a farm. And we're like, good. That's great. Um, they need to be saying, Sam, I've been working for 10 years. I'm the best farmer going around. I've, I've invested in a property next, you know, in, in town. I, um, I've been, I've got three jobs. I've been working on a farm, you know, I've been doing all these things. I just need an opportunity to get in front of a retiring farmer or an investor. And it's those people that we work with or those people who, you know, nearly there and just need a bit of an encouragement to, to go to the next level. Um, they're the ones we want and we want to, connect them uh, you know, why because for our reputations at stake here that if we're putting farmers in front of retiring farmers and investors who aren't good enough you know there goes our reputation there goes the deals we can do so our job is to give that carrot of ownership to the next generation to say hey it is possible to own your farm but if you're not good enough you're not going to get one you know maybe you will if i don't know if someone puts you in their will for whatever reason and you get it um, but if you want it it's going to be bloody hard uh, you need to go work on a farm and you need to be good enough and you need to be, you need to be an entrepreneur. Are you, are you willing to wake up at midnight, nearly vomiting, wondering how you're going to pay the bills? You know, are you happy with that sort of pressure on you? If that is you, great. If not, maybe you shouldn't think about owning a farm. So there's all these filters that we put in um, to make sure we're, we're putting the right farmers in front of investors and, and retiring farmers. Um, we're not sugarcoating it. We do, you know, we try and pump people up, say you can own your farm, you can own your farm, but very conscious of not saying this is easy. I can sound so appealing, Sam, but I know that it's the cold hard reality of it, right? Yeah. The, the, the role you're playing with, what, what you've created is very similar to, um, I do a lot of work with, with angel investment groups. And it's a similar thing there. And I think the, the pitch session that Sam, you held four, four or six weeks ago and you brought um, a half a dozen or so aspiring farmers um, online, you know, using using um, you know the online platforms we've got now to let them pitch to whoever. Um, the conversations there were very similar to what a lot of angel investors hear, which is, it's great to have an idea. It's great to think you want to own your own business, whether it's a farm or a startup. That that passion is fantastic. That's a good starting point. The reality is, you you want someone who's who's been down the mines, mm -hmm. who's faced adversity. 
uh, who's figured out that it's not all fantastic. They're not going to make you know, millions of dollars overnight just by some lucky activity. It's bloody hard work. Um, and when you attach your reputation as the, the facilitator to that, making sure you put the right people together mm. isn't going to guarantee success, but you minimise the risk. And I guess that's a, that's a big piece of it. I'll probably reflect on something else as well. You spoke about no one else in the, in the world is doing this, right? So we, we haven't seen anyone in my, my Google searches. I haven't found anyone. You've spent three years looking. So if you haven't found them, I doubt they exist or if they do exist, they're not very easy to find. Is, is there in your future a, a cultivate business model that's, whether it's franchised or licensed that will set up in New Zealand, in America, wherever? Because it seems like this generational shift, succession planning, um, baby boomers, this issue, yes, it's prevalent in Australia, but it's probably very similar around the world. This issue doesn't exist just in Australia. Do you have aspirations three years into this journey to become a global organisation? Yes. Uh, yeah. And I think we can. Like, I think everything we talk about um, applies in Switzerland or in Africa or, you know, you know South Africa in, in America, you know, wherever it applies that land is expensive and people don't start with money in their pocket um, mm. to go buy a farm. So um, I mean, think about how we do that, whether we had to base people in, in different countries, but really we can just promote farms anywhere in Australia from, from Australia um, and just it, it is, doesn't have to be that quite that complicated. It's just around getting attention probably in each in each country. So, we'd love to love to chat to anyone from any country to, to do that. We are we are having having those conversations. It's just a matter of working through it. And <clears throat> probably the big thing for us is getting people who get the the what we're trying to do here. Um, and you know, there aren't many people willing to um, dedicate their lives to this sort of crazy idea. Um, so it's just finding the right people in each country would probably be our, our issue who become the face of it to, to build momentum. So we're hearing it here, uh, local ambition, global ambition, pretty much, isn't it? It is. Yeah. My, my final question, James might have another, but my final question is really, you know, as you're working to kind of, you know, connect and build these kind of communities of, of people who work together to realise some dreams and ambitions, you're sitting here in Kyneton, in Victoria, you've got a business partner uh, who, who no doubt you guys are, are pretty tight as well, mm -hmm. um, but you are starting a new enterprise, a new concept, a new platform uh, in, in a space navigating the tyrannies of distance. Uh, uh, how, how are you, how are you you getting support what sort of an ecosystem of support and guidance and sounding boards are you putting around yourself to help you i, I suppose you know sustain your own energy and enthusiasm and progress a uh, really good question um i guess the first one was just my mental uh community like is in my head do i really want this and, and uh, i went through i worked for government for years and I realized no i want to do i've got ideas i want to make them happen and so you know that that drives me and now I've realized I just need to get good people around me, <clears throat> which is what we say to farmers as well. Who have you got? If you have friends around you who are pulling you down, you need to get, you need to get, need to get rid of them um, and get the right people around you. And I guess that's what I've done as well. I've got, uh, you know, directors on the, on the company as well, who are into investment and to, and to good farming. Um, and I've you know, really made sure we've headhunted the right people who, who get this and want to support us. Just yesterday, we we're out at a farm with three other, three other blokes, who I've been courting for years as well, and who have different skills around investment and, and farm management. And it was really nice just to be going to this farm and, and pulling it apart with people who's got skills that I don't have, <clears throat> which is so good. So I feel like it's been just going for it, putting a vision out there with Tim and Teague and the co-founders and seeing who we can uncover. And those people, there's a lot of people who think we're crazy. Uh, there's a lot of people who love us. And there's, there's a few that say, hey, how can I get involved? And it's just getting to know them and, and making sure that we, we get along, I guess, doing our own matchmaking. But it feels like we've got a great community around us now, which is really exciting. And <clears throat> the, you know, we have so much potential. So in conversation I'm having every day um, are the conversations I wanted when we first started this. And um, yeah, look out for the next, next couple of years. Fantastic. We hear that a lot, don't we? That someone who starts out with an idea, whether it's one or two people, um, one of the key things that seems to bring a bit of relief, but also speed of growth is getting a team around them of some sort, whether it's an advisory board or, or whatever else. And it seems that, I think it's what you're speaking of, really having an advisory board in, in place. Um, and that's one thing we, we say a lot to founders is try and do that early on. Do it as early as you can. Um, there are some really generous people sitting out in, in Australia, around the world, who are happy to get involved, happy to lend lend some time. 
uh, and they're not look, looking for a payday necessarily. And I think you know, people can get one or two or three to help who step in for an hour or two a month, have that conversation. Uh, but it really does seem to change the trajectory of, of a business. So that's that's um, interesting that you say that. We had a similar conversation yesterday with someone. They said that was a pivotal point for them, was getting that board together that really said they went from feeling like they were there by themselves, mm. which in some ways is a bit easier, can be a bit quicker, uh, but isn't necessarily as sustainable or as powerful. But we're right now at this point where we've got supply of farms coming through. We've got farmers who have amazing pitches, getting great deals off the market, uh, ready to go and we just need to give enough confidence and structures to the investors we've also realized that there's not going to be one size fits all here with investors uh, that we need to you know be ready with a fund and that's it we're looking exploring that at the moment partner with other funds uh, get the unit trust structure in and ensure that we're giving enough guidance to the, the aspiring farmers so they're flexible when they're meeting these investors uh, that they they are you know ready for a fund or they're ready for a, a unit trust or ready for someone just to come in and buy and co-own with them whatever it is um, so we've got to be flexible, but have enough confidence in those three or four or five different ways that these these deals can come together. Mm. But particularly in, we, 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 yeah, there's mo- there is money everywhere, and especially in local communities. And so that's probably a big passion is <clears throat> how do we get enough investors across Australia to help take the lead for local investors to find local solutions for their own community to say, if you're sick and tired of young people leaving your community and you're you're complaining about it, and you've got $3 million or you know, $200,000 sitting in your bank and you're not investing in a farm to back the full forward and the goalkeeper to come stay or you know, live or, or come stay in your community, you know, what are you doing? You know, there, there are so many, if you like a community and you know it's investable, you invest yourself and um, back some next gen and great quality farmers. So that's the stuff we're really excited by. And we've had ideas around community funds uh, or you know, really it's just getting a couple of people together or one person and just saying you can own a farm and you can back really great farmers and they're all here. Here they are. We've got a massive database of them. Um, what do you want to do? Sam, I think it's unbelievably mm. exciting. I really like mm. it on so many levels. I love the passion that you've got for it and I love the rationale yeah. that you're applying that it is community um, sustaining and nurturing um, and, and food chain as well. And we know with the succession planning challenges of farmers um, and, and, and the egress of young talent out of regional communities, whatever you can do to play a positive role in that. Yep. Um, if you set up a super rules team in Kitan, mate, uh, forward pocket, uh, <laughs> back pocket, maybe left, right out. Um, <laughs> we're really grateful to you for sharing a little bit of your story so far. Um, if our viewers want to check out Sam's terrific business cultivation, farms details down the bottom down here um, and you can have a bit of a look and, and even reach out to sam for a bit of a conversation um, sam really appreciate you joining us today on the advisory deck join james thank you very much james as yeah. always terrific conversation yeah, lots of insights wasn't it? Yeah. pertinent to a yeah. whole lot of business leaders mm. out there as well so mm. if you'd like to have a conversation with us on the advisory deck please get in touch and we really appreciate you joining us here today on the advisory deck